Good morning, team, and welcome to your first live fitness, disco fitness session here at the Barn Theatre this morning. I'm David. And I'm Anna, and we are so excited that you decided to join us today. But before we start, please just make sure you've got some water to hand and that you've got a nice, safe space to exercise in. So I'm going to hand you back to David, and he's going to take you through a little breakdown of what we're actually going to do today. So our session is going to begin with a general warm. This is ideally designed for you to make sure you're nice and warm, the joints are nicely lubricated, ready to go into your workout. We're going to go into some conditioning. The conditioning is there, we're going to focus on some gymnastic movements. The gymnastics there, we're going to look at some things that's going to work for your midline. So that's going to work for the abdominals, that middle section of your body. And then we're going to teach you a new skill. Some of you have done burpees before, we're going to teach you something new on your burpee. And then we're going to go through our metabolic conditioning. This is the bit that's going to get you hot and sweaty today, get you out of breath. So hopefully we can introduce that new skill into that workout for you today, and we'll have lots of various scales you can use so everyone can join on that part of the workout. That's going to last about eight minutes. Right, so without further ado, we'll start with our general warm-up. So you're going to take hold of your own hands and perform something called a wrist circle. So wrist circles to begin. We're going to do ten repetitions. This is obviously mobilizing our wrist, getting a bit of blood into that area. It shouldn't get you out of breath, hopefully. Then we're going to move to the elbows, and we're going to do some elbow circles. So again, make sure your space is safe, you're not going to hit anyone or anything. We're going to do 10 in one way, and we'll change the other way. 10 to the other direction. We're make that a little bit bigger now, we're going to do some shoulder circles. We're going to do big circles backwards. Four again, 10 repetitions. And we'll change direction, we're going to have forwards this time. And we're going to do some shoulder taps. So we're going to tap ourselves on the back, congratulate ourselves for doing that first session today. Elbow as high as you can. Try and almost brush your ear with your bicep. The higher the elbow, the bigger the stretch. And the next one, we're going to go hand out to the side. We go palm up, palm up through 180 degrees. This is called Shakira. If you want to add the hips, you can add the hips as well. <laughs> And I'm going to go opposite side of your body, behind your head. Shoulder tap, we're going to reach through on the other side. So we get a tap and lateral flexion. Just making sure that rib cage is nicely mobilized, that muscles under your arms, a little bit in the abdominals. And now we get to give yourself a, a hug. Give Favorite yourself a hug. Favorite. So we'll open our chest up. This might get you a little bit out of breath. Think about again about palms up as we stretch. And I'm going to go up and down. So as tall as you can, reaching as hard as you can up, and as far as you can back at the bottom. Up and down. Again, 10 reps. Enjoying that little stretch. So these are dynamic mobility exercises rather than a normal static stretch, because we're obviously going to do something dynamic in a moment. We're going to open our feet up to a slightly wider base, and we do something called a torso rotation. Again, definitely make sure you're safe, you're not going to hit anything or anyone with this one. You can pivot on your foot, or you can squeeze your butt and keep the feet flat on the floor. Next piece, you can put the hands on the hips, hands on the abs, wherever you want to feel comfortable, and it's hip circles. Be a hula time. <laughs> Invisible hula hoops. Get me the other way. Change direction. We're going to bring the feet together. From here, we're going to hold your knees and knee circles. Again, we're going to do 10 in one way, and then we'll change direction from 10 in the opposite direction. And then we're going to the ankles. So, with the toe on the floor, you can mobilize the ankle. Anna's being a bit of a ninja, she's doing it on balancing on one foot. Change feet, exactly the same thing on the other side. So if this is too easy, this is your option. So now I'm going to demonstrate the next lot of exercises so I can stay standing up and talk you through them. We're doing something called the Iron Cross. So from a position on your back, you'll bring your right foot across the left hand, across your body, and then left foot to right hand. If that's too challenging, you can do it with a bent leg. And the higher that knee goes up, 
the bigger the stretch. So you feel that through your buttocks into your lower back. As I'm going to turn onto our front, do a similar movement. This is called a scorpion. So again, the foot travels across the body. Right foot, left hand. Left foot to right hand. You'll feel this in the front part of your thighs, into the abdomen, maybe a little bit through your chest. We're now going to go to one knee. This requires a little bit of coordination. So from here, I'm going to go hands up in the air. For the little kids, this is tickle fingers up. Push the legs straight, hands come down. We go up and down. Up and down. This is hamstrings and hips. You get a little bit of work to the lats, a little bit to the abs. And then from there, we're going to change legs. Exactly the same thing on the other side. Hands up, hands down. Rocking forwards, rocking backwards. Good synchrona. Practice. And whilst we're on our knees, we're going to do a little bit of work for the wrists. Make sure that we've got a bit of sand where we actually put it work today, we're actually on your hands. So we're going to make a fist with your hands. We're going to pop that fist on the floor. We're going to let the hand go down to the back of the ground, back of the hand up and up, down and down, up and up. All the time, making sure your arm is straight. So you get a little stretch through the back of your hands and wrists and forearms. Then we'll go with our fingers, point towards your knees. I'm going to rock left and right. Again, you can notice that our arms are straight. This is quite a nice stretch. For some of you that haven't done this before, this would be probably a great stretch for your forearms, especially if you spend a lot of time at a desk using the keyboard. And then from there, we go front to back. Brilliant. And from there, we come upright. So you're going to hold on to your own shoes. And then from there, lower your bottom towards the floor. As low as feels safe for you guys. And lift your bottom up. Whoop. <laughs> and then down. And up. We're going to do five reps. So the more flexible amongst you, you can get your legs straight. Good. So if you guys now find something to hold on to, do a couple of leg swings. Just so the right height. Work to a height that feels safe for you. Obviously the same thing on the other side. Brilliant. So hopefully now we're suitably warm, so we're going to go through our conditioning. The way it's going to work now is I'm going to go through and talk you through the movements. I'm going to spend five minutes having a little practice of these exercises. Um, Anna's going to demonstrate and I'm going to actually do the, the talking. It's quite hard to talk and demonstrate at the same time. Yeah. So we're going to pop five on the clock. So exercise number one. You need to make sure you have a nice safe spot on the ground, something just fairly comfortable. Anna's going to do something called a hollow hold. So for this position here, her legs are out straight. She's lifted her shoulder to the floor. You notice that her lower back is flat into the ground. Her hands are reaching down towards the knees. This is engaging your abdominals. I'm going to give Anna a little break. We can make it a little bit harder now. So Anna's going to do the same thing, but lift one foot off the floor and a second foot off the floor. So you notice she's now in a contact lens or a T saucer sight kind of shape. Bringing her hands overhead makes it a little bit harder. Okay. So find yourself a little bit of space on your floor. Let's try this progression. So hands by your side, lift your shoulders up. If that's easy, we'll go one foot, a second foot. If that's still easy, hands overhead. Very good. This is a hollow hold. So the next piece, we're going to make it slightly more dynamic. I'm going to get Anna to sit upright. She's going to go hands overhead. You're going to slowly rock backwards and then forwards. So this creates that nice hollow shape. The more lower the feet are to the ground, the more challenged it becomes. If this is too challenging, Anna's going to hold behind her knees and do a similar rocking action with her hands behind the knees. Good. So again, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to have a practice this one as well. So we start sat upright, hands overhead, rocking front to back. Let's see if we can get five repetitions. Four. 
or the other alternative is behind the knees for five reps. Excellent. So we've worked a lot of stuff in the front, now we're going to do the, the opposite, so the posterior, the back. So Anna's next exercise, let on her front, she's going to lift her hands off the ground and her feet off the ground. Okay, so this is a hollow hold. To make it a dynamic movement, we just lift up and down. Up and down. So that extended position, it's long levers, makes it a little bit harder. To make it easier, Anna's bent her arms, a bit like skydiving. So elbows and hands off the floor. Then we have a lower scale where we can push through the ground. So we're going to give a little bit of time on this one to make sure we're nicely warmed up. So we can try the full thing. Let's try five reps. We go to the next scale down. Hands and elbows. Or hands on the floor. Very good. So now I'm going to put this in a little workout. So I think we'll go three rounds. Yeah, three rounds. And we'll do 10 reps of each. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do what we call a you go, I go. So yes. we're going to take it in turns. I'm just going to show you the harder version. We'll tag out and I'll do the easier version. So let's start on our bottoms, ready for our hollow hold. We're going to hold it for about 10 seconds. <laughs> Athletes, here we go. In three, two, one, off we go. 10 second hollow hold. You can hope to see the clock. You don't have to tell me when that is. <laughs> Three, two, one. You can rock from that position. We're doing 10 rocks. Seven. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. You can turn onto your front. I'm going to do 10 Supermans on the floor. So again, nice long arch. So I'm going to sub in with Anna, and I'm going to do the easier version. OK, so we just go through those scales again. So our hollow hold. So David opting just to lift his shoulders off the floor and maintain that stability through the core. It must be 10 seconds. Yeah, it is 10 seconds. Now David's going to hold behind the knee to go into his rocking action. So still keeping nice and con like contained and compact. But we're still keeping that tension in the abdominals. So once he's done 10 of those, we go into the arch supermans. Eight, nine, and 10. So David, if you show the option with your levers down, so basically we're shorting the levers. So his arms are staying close to the body. Now, if that's still a bit easy, you can lift the legs at the same time if you want to. So then we're creating tension in the whole, from the glutes, the hamstrings, the lower back. Brilliant. And 10. Tag so you we've back got in. one more time. So Anna's back in on the harder scale again. Thumbs She's up. done the full thing, 10 seconds. Or oh, we'll give it extra time. We'll, we'll catch on to this one. We'll do three, two, one. We're going to hollow rock. 10, nine, eight. Seven, six, keep breathing. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, and one. Onto your front for the Superman. Ten, and nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Well done. So you guys get a little breather now where we Lovely demonstrate guys. some more stuff for you guys. So this is the skill element of the workout. Right. So I'm going to do the exercise, and Anna's going to take you through these movements. So the skill we're going to teach you today is called the reverse burpee. So you're probably more aware of the actual conventional burpee. David, do you want to demo? So that is the full scale. Now, if we want to make that a little bit easier, David, you share a scaled version. So we're taking the impact out of the movement. And we can even go a little bit further and keep David nice and high so he's off of the floor. So guys, if you struggle with any of the reverse burpee we're about to show you, that will be the movement that you go back to. So let's show the reverse burpee. So this is the hardest scale. So we do something called a candlestick roll. See the position David stays in? He comes up into the bottom of the squat, 
jumps and claps. Now that is quite advanced, so if you quite can't get that, we do have a lower scale. So David is now gonna use the leg to go behind one to slowly lower himself to the floor. He uses the arm to take some more weight, leg comes through, he rocks, comes up with the leg to create momentum, into the bottom position, and you can still jump and clap. Brilliant. So if that one was a little bit too easy, we do have one that's in the middle. So one leg goes in front, lift the toe, lower yourself down as if you're going to sit into a chair. We rock, punch up, and you can still jump and clap. So there should be one scale for everyone. So we're just going to spend some time, pick a scale, see if you can perform three repetitions. Whilst you're doing that, David's going to go through all the scales again. So do the hardest scale first, candlestick roll, so keep the tension in the abdominals, into the bottom of the squat, jump and clap. Easiest scale. We use the leg to kneel down, arm to support, kick. Brilliant. Jump and clap. And then the middle scale. Leg goes in front, we lower. Jump and clap. So remember, if this was a little bit too challenging today, this new scale of the reverse burpee, you can use the conventional burpee in the workout that we're going to do in a second, which is just this. So again, we have a few scales for you. You can take the impact out, or you can stay nice and high. Brilliant. So if you're happy with the scale, we're now going to incorporate that into our workout. So we've got to teach you the Metcon first. We're going to start with an exercise that we call a front support toe tap. This requires Anna to get into position where she's going to hold the top of a push-up. So from the push-up position, she's going to reach, lift her bottom up in the air and tap the opposite foot. Bottom goes up, tap the opposite foot, hips come down. So again, let's have a couple of seconds of work to try and do that. If that's too challenging, the next scale down is to do the same thing but tapping the knee. The bottom still goes up and down, taps the knee. If that's too hard, down to all fours, shoulder tap. So most people should be able to manage this one or one of the other three scales. So we're going to add a thing, something called a check-in. So check-in, but I'll check into a hotel. We're going to do this as part of the first part of the workout before we get into the next piece. The next piece is something called an AMRAP. An AMRAP is as many reps as possible in the remaining time. So we can set the workout for eight minutes. We're going to do 50 of those shoulder taps and the remaining time left in the, in the clock, we're going to use the next pieces. So we're starting with reverse burpee. a reverse like burpee. That. So Anna's just going to demonstrate again another three of these, make sure you're happy with this. Kick down hard, nose to toes, jump and clap. Okay, reverse burpee. All one of the scales just showed you a moment ago. So this one. So we've got lots of scales for that one. We're going to go into something called a bird dog. The bird dog's pretty straightforward exercise. From your hands and knees, you can go opposite hand and foot out in front. So that's right and left, left and right. If that's too easy, we can make it a little bit harder. So we're from a planked position. This makes it more challenging. So again, there should be a scale for everyone to achieve on that one. We're going to do six reps on the bird dogs or the planks. The next piece is the air squat. This is sort of the foundation movement for us. So we should be looking for a squat, your hip crease goes below the knee and you stand fully upright. Some of you might not be able to hit that full depth on a squat, so you can work to a depth that feels safe for you. Or your alternative, you can use a chair or a stool or a footstool or a pouffet, or have they, have they pronounced, <laughs> um, to sit down on. So, so you can obviously hit a target with your bottom, so a tactile cue before you stand up. We tend to favour a breaststroke style technique, so we can go through those reps pretty quickly on that. The next piece is something called a dead bug. Dead bug, we start level on the back, again with a nice flat back on the floor. So push that lower back into the so ground. I can't get through. So you avoid an arch position. So pushing the back down. And it's gonna go same side arm and leg out into extension. To make it a little bit easier, and it can just do arms, but still maintaining that 90 degrees so of the hip. I still hip. can't get through, even and when knee. I'm moving. Or we can just do a little bit harder again. It's a leg, keeping the hands up towards the ceiling. So the workout, as we explained a moment ago, is going to be at eight minutes in duration. We'll start with a 50 times uh, front support toe taps. We're going to go through our AMRAPs. So you do the 50 toe taps once, 
but we're going to the, the next piece. It's the reverse burpee. We're doing 10 reps in those reverse burpees. Into your bird dogs. So the bird dogs, we mentioned a moment ago, is from the knees, or you can try the advanced version in that plank position. So only six reps. That's a few enough reps on that one. We do our air squats. So we're working to a full depth on those air squats, all the way down, all the way up. We'd rather see you guys go all the way down, all the way up, and do fewer reps in the rounds than do short, quick reps that aren't actually helping you. And we'll finish up with our dead, dead bugs bug. to conclude the workout. Again, what you'll see for us is you'll see myself and Anna doing two different scales. We'll again, we'll tag in and out as we go through the rounds. So you'll see Anna doing the harder ones. Thanks. And she'll get her <laughs> breath back while I do the easier ones. So I'm going to pop eight minutes for us on the clock. And the clock will count down. So I'll do 25 and then you'll do 25. Correct. But it's 50 in total. So you're doing 50 shoulder taps to check in. Athletes, you're starting in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Toe taps. 50 repetitions. So Anna's doing 25 of the full thing. Bottom goes up. Tapping opposite foot. All the time, making sure we get those abs braced throughout. Breathing on each rep. That's 20. So what happens seconds? We'll, we'll high five in. I'll take over the next 25 reps on the easier scale. For yours. <laughs> so I'm doing the same thing, but a knee tap. So what it's really important, guys, to do is make sure that you're bracing your abdominals as you're coming down into that front-loaded position. It's really easy to arch the back. So you just squeeze the bum. Brilliant. So we want to get this 50 done as quickly as possible to get as many rounds and reps we can in the actual AMRAP. So coming up next, oh, those reverse burpees. 18. That's it, nearly there. Last few reps for David. 21. So we're tagged back in. And five. So I'll do five of the hard ones. We're into the reverse burpee. So that candlestick position. Kick, bottom. So stay nice and tight throughout again. Make sure you obviously do this on a soft surface. <laughs> yeah, this is not soft. <laughs> So David shows the scale for the next five reps. So I'll, do, whoop, whoop. I'll do a couple of the easier ones. That's it. So all he's doing is using his leg and arm to help support some of the weight as he's coming down. But this is a brilliant exercise to actually help you get stronger in just getting up and down on a chair that we do pretty much every day, getting out of bed, So, bird dogs next. Tag. Off we go. So, do you want me to do the hard option then? So, Anna's going to try the harder <laughs> version. <laughs> sure. From the Superman. So, again, this is obviously very much a midline trunk activity. That was six, but you'll do six. David will show you six of the lower option. So we're basically trying to keep that nice straight line throughout the body. Brace those abs. Whatever scale you're at, you can still brace those abdominals. <laughs> Air squats. Shall I show you this technique then? So breast rotate technique with the arms. Again, make sure you pull those hips through. Maybe five. So slow, controlled, hips come through at the top. So this is a technique you'd use if you are lowering yourself onto a chair. So you really want to stick that butt out. And five. Dead bugs. Again, Anna's on the harder scale. Shock. <laughs> it's same side. There's right arm, right here. left. Left and left. I'm going to share the reps. You go, I go. Share the love. Six. So where are we on the clock? Oh, four minutes. 
Halfway, guys, halfway. So we can get another round in. David hurries up. Six. <laughs> right, so you don't have to do... Remember, we're not checking in again. We're going straight back to these burpees. So again, use that cue of nose to toes, which will help you rock forwards and jump up right. So nice dynamic movement. It's easy for those knees to want to come in on those squats. Um, as you're getting tired, the knees will want to collapse. So really, really push them out. So you can actually use some of the hollow position that we learned earlier in the day. So keep that tension. Brilliant. Bird dogs next. Awesome. So the bird dogs. Anna's going to go for that superman position. That was quick. So the key with that is to really squeeze your butt. If you're going for that harder option, guys, it really makes the difference. Five, <laughs> six. <laughs> squats. Anna's back in, air squats. Five. Two and a half minutes. Dead bugs. Dead bugs. So you can see, even us, we're getting quite out of breath. It's also quite warm. <laughs> Make sure training area is not too hot. Open a win if you need to. If you're wondering why these are called dead bugs, it's because that's apparently what a bug looks like when it's dead. <laughs> right. First burpees. That's the beginning. AMRAP. Three, four, and five. <laughs> Come on then. Oh, one and a half minutes. Oh, a bit of a Time is there. running out now. So remember, we're going for rounds and reps. So every rep counts. So we don't give up. What have we got next? Bird dogs. Nice. So that's the slowest exercise complete. These rest of the exercise are now quite fast. One minute. Oh, final minute of work, guys. Take your time, David. <laughs> <laughs> so once we finish the workout, we're also going to give you a little bit of a cool down. So you can keep working, guys. Work as fast as you can. 45 seconds. And five. Last one. Six. Tank back in. Oh, 25 seconds. Am I going to have to go again? Five and six. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Watch out. The last few reps. Keep squirking. Ten seconds, athletes. Two. Three. Five seconds. <laughs> Four. Get one more, maybe. <laughs> and five. Well, well done. Count. So you guys get virtual high fives. Well done. We can actually do a real high five. Awesome work, guys. Good work. So we need to make sure we have a little cool down now. So you're going to let your heart rates recover. Bring your breathing rates down, or do some stretching. So, good news, you get to sit down. So, start on your bottoms. We're going to go with one leg behind. We call this the figure of four. Doesn't look much like a four, but it's sort of there. <clears throat> we'll go hands on the floor behind your body, and I'm squeezing my buttock. So, I stretch through the front part of my thigh. Just enjoy that stretch. We'll go 30 seconds probably for this one. So from there, we're going to go elbows in front. I think we'll try and make it a little more challenging. We go elbows to the ground. Some of you won't be able to manage elbows to the floor, so you might have to go hands on the floor in front. 
ideally elbows to the floor. So we're stretching now through the opposite hip. And again, 30 seconds worth of work. The next one's a good test. Popping up, we're going to bring that back foot out in front. This is when we realise we're not very mobile. So you're going to hold on to your own shoe or your own foot, whatever you're wearing. And then from there, you're going to straighten that leg out. That was the floor rather than my knee. So from here, I'm going to make sure my leg's nice and straight. If that's too easy, use my opposite elbow. I'm going to slowly reach towards the floor. So I feel that now my calf and my hamstring. Some of you might feel a little bit in your lower back. If it's too easy, you're going to be walking your fingers down your shoes. We're going to do something called a frog stretch now. It's going to bring the soles of the feet together. I'm going to hold my own feet. Keep my back as flat as I possibly can. I can use my elbows as a lever so I can push my knees down. So if you're really flexible like Anna, Anna can actually pull herself quite a long way towards the floor. There's no way I'm getting down there. Again, 30 seconds with a stretch. And we'll go, what was the front foot now becomes the back foot. Okay. So from there we'll go, stretch to the hip again, squeezing the butt, stretch to the quad. Some of you might even feel this in the abdomen, if you're not used to those hollows and hollow rocks and things. Slide those elbows on the floor. So again, if there's too much hands on the floor, if you're okay, you can go elbows down. You'll start to notice there's a difference between right and left side. Some of you will be more mobile on one side than the other. So hanging out down here for about 30 seconds. This is the opposite hip this time. And we'll have the grand finale. With that back foot out in front. Stretch that leg out. Again, to a stretch that feels comfortable for you guys. Some of you might be holding onto your shin, some might be holding onto your knees. We're looking for the foot if we can. And if it's too easy, I said elbow to the floor. So by now your heart rate should be nice and low. You should be able to breathe normally. You should be able to hold a conversation when you're talking. And have you got a conversation voice yet? Yes, I have. Yeah, she's fully recovered. So we'll very, very slowly come back to our feet. Not rushing that too much. So that concludes your first session with Disco Fitness at the Barn Theatre Live. Thank you very much for joining us. If you can take a first session selfie for us and send it through to us on the Facebook, um, I think Instagram possibly as well, and we'll have, we'll have some fun with those. Yeah, brilliant. Put them up on live next session. Yeah. I've been David. And I'm Anna, and it's been a pleasure to have you all join us today. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, team. Thank you, guys. High fives. Virtual high fives. <laughs>
theatre can be transformational in young lives. Our academy is now in its fourth year and we continue to build on our vision of bringing the best performing arts tuition to the heart of the Cotswolds. We work hard to make our academy as inclusive and as accessible as possible. Discounts apply for parents with more than one child. Our bursaries help support talented children from less affluent backgrounds. The Academy creates a fun and challenging environment where children can build friendships and develop key skills not just for theatre, but for life. We are also able to provide real opportunities for students who wish to pursue careers in the arts. My name is Harry Apps. I am currently playing Marius in Les Miserables in the West End. Barn outreach and learning programmes engage with thousands of people. Our free workshops support the drama curriculum in local schools. Singing and musical theatre workshops in community groups and care homes have helped address issues of isolation. Our Song for Sirencester project in aid of mental health charities brought our community together in an unprecedented way. We've collaborated with many charities in the region, including the Churn project, to support individuals dealing with the barriers to finding work. Since working you on my life's changed. It's given me some purpose, given me an interest, some confidence I was lacking prior to all this. The Barn Theatre played a pivotal role in the town's 2018 World War I centenary celebrations. Who could forget our record-breaking human poppy? Our live streaming work on the annual Advent Festival helped thousands engage and take part in Sirencester's Christmas festivities. In these times of uncertainty, we strive to keep the community together. The theatre may be temporarily closed, but our commitment to you goes on. Even now, our amazing costume department are helping the NHS by making scrubs for frontline workers. We've used our technology to build a free live streaming service that provides much needed community news and entertainment for all the family. Broadcasting every day to keep us all connected. We are not just a theatre. We are the bar.